uh, it's just a joy to be here to, to uh, uh, help us all kind of go back. And I think this is an exercise that everybody should do. Yeah. Whether you write it down or not. Mm, yeah. Think about uh, the people that God has placed in your life yeah. over yeah. and over, and he moves you on to someone else. It is a wonderful, wonderful uh, exercise. And I believe you come out of an other, uh, on the other side uh, using two words that uh, probably are not used very much anymore. Thank you. Talking about shaped notes. So let's go back to the she beginning. She's a Pentecostal holiness lady. She wore oh. that, mm -hmm. that white dress and the big buttons yeah. right down the front. <laughs> nice. <laughs> and uh, boy, she'd get to shouting in church. She'd flat run over you. You'd get out of her way. <laughs> but she uh, was praying for my dad. And, uh, you know, I, again, I'm a little guy. I don't understand all the dynamics of everything that was going on. But there were nights when I, I could hear him knocking on the door. She would not, she'd not let him in. But she prayed for him. And I'm four or five years old, and I'm listening to this. And I got to tell you, even I knew that he didn't have a chance. Not a chance. <laughs> <laughs> not with those prayers. Not with those prayers. And wow. then he became, he, he really met the Lord and broke a cycle of uh, his dad had gone to prison. Wow. I think he had a brother that, that went, but I didn't go. Wow. And my cousin didn't go. When dad, I, I was in the, I was probably in middle school because I, I remember standing in the driveway when they came to take him, take him away. And really one of the guys that um, arrested dad it was a guy by the name of Sammy Dexter. He was a detective. Sammy was a great Christian, and I got to know Sammy. Wow. He's a wonderful, wonderful uh, person to know. But I was standing in the, in the, in the, you know, gr in the uh, driveway when they took him off, and that was, for a kid, that was a, that was mm -hmm. a dramatic mm -hmm. thing. Yes. Wow. But just as dramatic was when, uh, when he became the spiritual head of our family, mm -hmm. um, it got to the point where um, the pastor wanted dad to go to the hospital to pray with people. Wow. He, came out of, he came out of that whole situation with something that he could do that he'd be proud of. Dad's always cooked. He always, so he came out as a baker. He, and, um, wow. and so uh, indebted to another old guy back there, Burke's Bakery, hmm. uh, who gave my dad a chance and... And uh, what a wonderful story that was. And I can remember going into the, going into the breaker shop and dad would just be taking those donuts out and hanging them up. <laughs> Man, we gorged ourselves on all this stuff. But it was just, you know, God was ordering uh, our steps, not yeah. my steps. But as I look back, boy, there's, um, I, I, uh, there are often times when we learn lessons and we, we'd like to learn them another way. Yeah, yes. But God uses the circumstances in our life uh, that are even th those that are not so good. I, I understand that, that God uses, um, um, uses things to, in, to help me with my faith to help me grow in my faith. And they're not always pleasant, mm -hmm. but they are there. And, and it causes, causes you to, hopefully, the next time something comes about, to trust him. And I, I have to tell you, I look back on all of that, and, and I, I could only tell the story about my dad if it was victorious. Yeah. Yeah. It, 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 he, had, he got victory over the things that, yes. that had hold of him. And uh, he was simply trying to make a living. Yeah. Doesn't excuse it, right? Yeah. But man, what little boy needed to see that? This yeah. one. This yeah. one. Because the world oh. is not perfect. We are yeah. not perfect. And, and there are times of, um, you know, that we need to grow. And sometimes you, you, you don't start that process and not start it until the bottom. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Until the bottom. Um, um, there's a, I, I like, uh, the illustration of, of a controlled burn. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, every once in a while, the fireman will set fire to all of the brush mm -hmm. and all of the stuff that, mm -hmm. and, and even create a, a chasm between the forest so that there's a, you know, the fire will burn out if it, if it gets here. I believe that over and over, God has started controlled burns mm -hmm. in my own life yeah. wow. and uh, uh, burning away the legalism and the, and the pride. And it never really goes all the way out 
takes it down until the embers are still burning. And then he, he then uh, starts what my friend from uh, uh, Brooklyn Tab, uh, Tabernacle uh, uh, says. Um, he starts a fresh fire, mm-hmm. a new fire. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, Jim Zimbalum, uh, you know, wrote, wrote that book. And what a wonderful uh, book that is. And an illustration to tell us that, uh, you know, uh, God's always working on us. We're always in process. Because we can be busy doing a lot of things and, and get busy. We're busy all the time. We're running to and fro, you know, and I was doing that when I first started singing and, and Lord knows I was singing loud enough and singing high enough and doing all those things. And yet there was something missing. And every once in a while, God will have you do inventory. Mm-hmm. We go through life. And, 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 and what I was missing was a, you know, that, that, that Bible reading, that time with him. And I didn't, and, and I began to understand something that was backward to me. I, I have always understood that we, we need to sit at the feet of Jesus and allow him to teach us. But I didn't, I didn't get mm-hmm. that when we miss it, he misses us. Yeah. All through the Old yeah, Testament, does, all yeah. through the uh, Old Testament, as we read uh, uh, through, uh, especially through Second Kings and the, and the prophets and whatnot, you can hear a, a God uh, uh, ready to punish the children yeah. for not obeying. Mm-hmm. But you know, you can see behind that that his heart just yearns and weeps yes. for them. But there's always a time when he says. But if you will, if I, I want sure. to be your God, I want yes. to, I want to hold you under my wings mm. and protect you and, and love you. Yeah. I want to be your God and you be my people. Yeah. Um, um, there's an old song that my mom and dad in, in, a, in a, used to sing in the church. You can't beat God given no matter how you try, <laughs> you know, yeah. Yeah. and uh, one learns about humility and about service and about commitment through a relationship. I cannot sing about what I don't know about. Right, yeah, mm. right. I simply cannot do it. I can, I can, I can fool you, <laughs> but there's no fooling That's God. True. He's the one, he's the one, one uh, person, uh, uh, God that, um, that you cannot bargain with. Yeah. First of all, uh, I think God is continually trying to let us know that we are on a team. Mm-hmm. That this is a team. Love it. Um, yes, I love my that. kids uh, would be listening to music out in the backyard of some <laughs> of some rapper. You know what I mean? <laughs> and I would just happen to I'd go, yeah. T- would you t- would you turn that down? <laughs> and yet the guy would be somebody that I know, mm. and I knew his testimony. Yeah. And it was uh, and and then that brought out that team concept. Mm. I don't want him to stay there. I want him to learn hymns. I want him to learn many right. things. Yeah. Uh, you know, the, the funny story. There was a couple who had a, they loved to uh, listen to radio before they went to bed. She, the lady shared this with me. Said they were laying in bed one night and uh, the cornerstone, Jesus is the cornerstone, came on and I re- recorded that. But they said they had a habit of listening. And, and so cornerstone, cornerstone came on. And the lady said they both kind of raised up in bed and they listened and they listened till it got to the end. And then when it was done, she said she reached over and turned her radio off and laid back down and said, my, 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 that white boy sure can sing. <laughs> <laughs> I was in a group traveling around and um, singing. Sometimes we were doing two and three concerts a day. Mm-hmm. And I was just, you're, I just abused it. That's yeah, all there was to it. A lot. Yeah. And, uh, Even if you're singing correctly, yeah. you can yeah. overuse that yeah. muscle. Yeah. And so I had the formation of nodules. I never actually had them, but the formation. And the doctors put me on a, a year's rest. And I wrote notes most yeah. of the time. Remember You've been that. through that? Yeah. Going to speech pathologists mm-hmm. and, and all of that kind of stuff. They would listen to a recording. And they'd say, you know what? I, I don't know if you're going to sound like that. You know, we'll just have to wait and see how this goes. Mm-hmm. But during that time, I started taking baths in, in the scripture. I mean, mm-hmm. I was just in the word all the time. And my wife, um, I, had, I was in a group. And because I couldn't sing, I had to leave. And we, she was pregnant with our, with our first, and we bought a little house back in Louisville, and we got payments, we got all this stuff. And I'm looking at this and saying, you know what, I'm not sure what's going on here. And I, was, I went to the temp line, and I stood there in that line, and, and, so, and God said to me, you know what, I want you to go home. Mm. So I went back home, and... 
and uh, still working through the anger, first of all. Listen, you know what? What? I don't know what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The good gifts come from the Lord. I didn't bring this on you, okay? Yeah. And then came the, um, just the, the heartache and the pity. And I went mm -hmm. through that st stage. All the time, staying in the Bible, staying in Scripture, reading Scripture, letting it, letting it mm -hmm. just, just, just uh, uh, immerse me. And I did that until one day I was able to say, Lord, if you are going to allow my voice to be taken or, or to not sing again, you must have something awfully good coming. Wow. And that's when I realized it wasn't about nodules. That's what he used. But it was about trust. When I left school, man, I'm going to look where I can go. Here's where my voice is going to take me. This is what I can do. Man, this is who I'm going to meet. God was saying, you know what? That all may happen, but I want you to trust in me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Trust in ability. Yeah. That's fine. I mean, but I want, I want you to trust in me. Yeah. And that's, uh, that's what came out of that. Yeah. That's it. That's and he knew that I was going to need that. Mm -hmm. right. Yes. To walk. The rest of my life.